Um, congratulations on this film. I really enjoyed it and your performance in it. Oh, and you. um, you've obviously been part of war films before, most notably War Horse over a decade ago now. Um, yeah. And that film and Benediction are so unique in their own right. First off, can you tell me what draws you to these more unconventional stories that are in such a widespread genre? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's anything particular. It's sort of scripts that I like. They're the ones that I, I go after. Um, but they don't, I wouldn't say there's any genre in particular. I mean, if anything, it's probably the opposite. I'd probably go after something which I haven't done before. Um, you know, it keeps things new and exciting. Um, but yeah, and also, you know, at the same time, it's, you know, an, an, act, an actor's career is, is only really chosen by themselves to a certain extent. Um, you know, it just, it, it's, it's what roles fit in with your schedule and, you know, which ones you get cast in as well. So, uh, yeah, but I read this one, um, just thought that the dialogue was really beautiful and uh, sort of funny and witty and then, I enjoyed saying the words. So, uh, yeah, so then I sent off a, an audition to, uh, to Terence, yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me about your preparation process for the role of Ivor in this film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I sort of, um, you know, I did all the usual stuff, you know, sort of researching what I could find about him online and watch some of his old movies. Um, but then I sort of had this realization that I wasn't, I should, you know, I wasn't really playing Ivan Novella, not Ivan Novella as Ivan Novella. I'm playing him as Siegfried saw him. And uh, uh, Siegfried kept diaries throughout his life, avid diary keeper, but he, he destroyed all the diaries from when he was with Ivan. Um, so, you know, that still gives you an idea of how much he, he didn't like Ivan Novello. So I basically took that as a great excuse to play him as a, as a real bastard. And uh, I'd seen a movie that he did called The Rat, which is a, uh, a silent film from back in the day. Um, and he's got this very heavy um, sort of that 1920s, 1930s silent film era makeup, white sort of face and dark eyeliner. And uh, I just thought it made him look really sinister. And uh, yeah, something kind of really quite sort of creepy and, and sort of scary about him. Um, and I sort of latched onto that. Um, and I'd also, you know, in my <laughs> in my career, I've met a couple of older actors that um, weren't particularly nice and uh, had a sort of quality uh, sort of, I don't know, uh, sort of slightly predatory quality about them. And uh, and so yeah, so I've sort of used a bit of that as well, and um, yeah, and sort of I don't know went from basically took it as a great excuse to yeah just be really horrible and uh, and yeah and vile for a, for a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and from all the research you did on him, what do you think was the most fascinating thing that you learned that you were able to put into your portrayal in the film? Well, I mean, you know, we all know Ivan Avello now. I mean, if you do know the name, you know him from the Music Awards, um, which are, you know, very famous. But I don't think many people do know him. And I think what surprised me most was learning just how famous he was um, back in the day. I mean, his, his the, there's footage of his funeral in London, and it's, uh, sorry, in Cardiff, I think. And, you know, it's people lining the streets um, at his when he died. And I think it's a, it's a funny look at how fame works. You know, Siegfried probably wasn't as famous as Ivan Novello was at the time, but, you know, Ivan had this sort of poppy sort of fame, I suppose, which ultimately sort of faded as the, as the years went by after his death and, uh, and Sassoon's name has lived on. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting to learn about that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you first appear in this film, you're playing the piano and you're singing. I know you also sang in Mamma Mia too. So what was it like to kind of get back into that, those musical roots of yours in this film? Well, Mamma Mia too, we pre-recorded. And so you're just basically miming along on set. But uh, this we sung live on set. And uh, the difference is, is on set on Mamma Mia, 
everyone can hear the music and my, you know, me singing and it's been beautifully sort of, uh, I don't know what they, whatever post production they do on on music um, between recording it in a nice studio and stuff. And then when we filmed for this one, no one could hear the backing track, the uh, the piano, because I'm pretending to play piano. And so I had a little earpiece with the music playing in the earpiece, but no one else could hear it. So for everyone else, I'm just singing, you know, on my own <laughs> with no backing track, pretending to play the piano. I mean, it must have looked. Yeah, must have looked really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Ivor and Sigrid's relationship is rather short-lived, obviously. So in your opinion, what makes their differences so irreconcilable in the end? Well, I just think that Ivor's one of those predatory sort of people who uses his fame to, in this film, uses his fame to, um, yeah, sleep with as many people as he can. Um, and, you know, I know lots of, <laughs> I've met a few people like that in the, uh, in the acting world <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, they exist. So I basically just took, yeah, took that and, and heightened it and made it, made him, yeah, really sort of quite vile. Mm -hmm. And you talked about Ivor's relationship with fame earlier, and both of these characters are artists of some form and each have garnered a level of fame when they meet. How does that ultimately play into their relationship dynamic? Um, well, I think Sassoon probably never never went after fame, you know, whereas either, you know, recognition for his work is, is the most important thing in the world. And the fact that Sassoon is probably more respected than he is, um, is, uh, yeah, quite the point of contention for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You share the vast majority of your screen time with Jack. What was it like working with an actor like him? It's great. I mean, you know, like 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 all good actors, he you know he makes life very easy for you. It's uh, mm. it's ultimately it's a it's a team sport uh, when you're on set. And uh, Terence Davies, the director, doesn't do very many takes, so you really have to trust the person you're working with. And um, yeah, Jack was great. You know, it, it, it's 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 sort of working with Terence, you've got to turn up and deliver um, sort of in those first few takes because you might not get many more. And, uh, and Jack delivers every time. And uh, I was really, when I, when I watched the movie, the thing I was most struck by was, was Jack's performance. I thought he did a really, a really good job. Yeah, and speaking of Terence Davies, how was your experience working with a director like him and how did he influence your involvement in the direction you took in the film? Um, well, I think like a, like a lot of, uh, well, like, like most of the sort of really experienced directors I've worked with, he knows exactly what he wants. Um, they, there's, a, there's what's called the second, uh, the second AD on set or the assistant director. And uh, the assistant director would constantly be saying to Terence, do you not think that we maybe we should, you know, go and get a close up as well, or we should go and get some coverage shots. And Terence would just say, no, I don't need it. I won't use it. And the director would be, the assistant director would be like, oh, well, you, should, you know, maybe we should just do it just in case. And Terence would go, I'm not going to use it. There's no point. So he knows exactly what he wants. Um, I found that his writing, the way it's written, just sort of told you exactly how, how it needed to be said. You know, it, it didn't need, the script for my character anyway, didn't need much stage direction. It was just obvious in the way, in the language, how, how it should be done. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's, you know, a sign, of a sign of a good writer and a sign of someone that's been doing it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So of course this film is about an LGBTQ individual in the World War I era. And these stories often get forgotten by history. So what does it mean to you to be a part of a story like this? Um, well, I mean, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to bring my own sort of sexuality into it because it's not, I'm playing a role, but um, I certainly think, you know, it's, it's I, I found, I just, I remember reading the script and just, I don't know, the tragedy of it all just really got to me. Um, and I found it very moving. I think it's just, one of a million, you know, he had such, such unrequited love, which is just, yeah, it's just tragic. And I, you know, I found it 
when I read the script, I found it deeply moving. And that was, I suppose, the main reason of, uh, of pursuing uh, the project. And uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I found it yeah, moving, I suppose. And um, obviously, um, about a year ago, you were cast in HBO Max's Green Lantern TV show. Um, can you give a quick little update about, you know, the process of that? I know it hasn't started filming yet, but just like how excited are you to enter the superhero genre? Um, I am very excited. Uh, at the same time, it's been a project that's been around for some time. And uh, as far as I know, there's no start date. But as soon as, uh, you know, when, when I get the call, I will... Uh, pop on my green tights and uh, and be there but um yeah you know i think it's 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 a very difficult time at the moment to get any project off the ground and uh, i know they want to do that project in a in a very large scale and i think getting all the stars to align on such an ambitious um telling of that story uh is difficult and uh yeah i hope it i hope it all comes together at some point but um you know these things unfortunately take a long time and they take a lot of different aspects to all sort of line up. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Jeremy. Congratulations on Benediction. Um, I wish you the best. Thanks very much. You.